The story of the Borodino, or Ismail class, is quite instructive as a microcosm of thought on what a battle cruiser should be like. It all started with the Battle of Tsushima, where Admiral Togo used his armoured cruisers in support of his relatively small number of battleships in the main line of battle. Within a couple of years, the Imperial Russian Navy was looking to acquire fast armoured cruisers of their own, although the intervening appearance of Dreadnought and Invincible meant that these plans were more akin to the first generation battle cruisers, despite the Russians not actually adopting that term until partway through World War I. But the government told the Navy that they couldn't have such ships, and so it wasn't until 1910 that approval was finally given for a ship, with initial specifications at least, that read somewhat like a bit of a bridge between the British 12-inch and 13.5-inch gunned battle cruisers, with 7.5 inches of armour, a 28-knot top speed, and 8 guns of either 12 or 14-inch calibre. A request for prices went out and various private yards came back, but they came back with figures that were about 25% higher than naval officials had estimated. Convinced that the yards were price gouging them, the Navy gave the contracts to their own shipyards instead, eventually settling at a cost of 45.5 million rubles per ship, which was a little higher than their original estimates but still well below the 51 million rubles that some of the private yards had wanted. However, looking at overseas developments in gunpower and bearing in mind that, somewhat like the Germans, the Russians were planning on these ships directly supplementing the battle line, the design was revised. The speed requirement was dropped to 26.5 knots in order to pay for the armour to be increased to 10 inches, which was actually thicker than the armour found on the first Russian dreadnoughts. The armament was also changed to nine 14-inch guns in three triple turrets, and these were all to be on the same deck level in line with current Russian battleship design philosophy. These specifications were then distributed to numerous foreign and domestic shipyards to turn into specific designs, but upon receipt of the submissions, almost all of the foreign yard's entries were ruled out because they'd not listened to one or more of the design requirements, with the exception of Vickers Design 540, which was rejected on account of displacing over 35,000 tonnes and thus being considered far too large. Left with a field of mostly local designs, the Navy changed the requirements again after the artillery section successfully campaigned for a four-turret design. The Russian Admiralty Works was the winner of this revised contest by the simple expedient of taking their three-turret design and sticking an additional hull section with a fourth turret in between the aft funnel and the mainmast. A few further revisions were made to the details as a result of the main changes in armament, and the armour thickness dropped a fraction to around about 9.5 inches, amongst other things. Four ships were thus ordered, Ismael, Borodino, Kinburn and Navarin, all named after famous battles, and all laid down in December 1912. But then, in 1913, the old battleship Shesma was fitted with an armour scheme that was along the lines of that found in the Gangut class, and whose principles had also been applied in the Borodinos. Test firings on this target found a number of problems, including inadequately supported armour plates, the thickness of the upper and middle deck armour being the wrong way round, and the armour in general not being thick enough in some areas. A revised design with 12 inches of belt armour was prepared, but budget constraints meant that this was kicked down the road to a potential Black Sea squadron to be built later. The only changes approved, in the end, being adding some armour to the conning tower, decks and turret roofs. This was paid for by dropping the armour belt down again to about 9.35 inches. These changes caused a number of delays to construction, as did the outbreak of war, as certain parts had been ordered from Germany, who was now somewhat disinclined to fulfil those orders, and the project began to grind to a halt. At this stage, the ships were projected to displace about 32,500 tonnes, with a main armament of 12 14-inch guns in four triple turrets, all on the same level, distributed along the ship's length. The secondary battery firepower came courtesy of 24 single casement-mounted 5.1-inch guns, which included a number of double-stacked casements in the forecastle four 2.5-inch anti-aircraft guns, and six 450mm submerged torpedo tubes, three per side, completed the armament. 
The belt was, as mentioned, 9.35 inches thick at the maximum, with 11.8 inch thick turret faces and two armor decks of approximately 1.5 inches apiece, with the slopes of the lower of the two decks being just under 3 inches thick, although it was made up of two separate layers. 66,000 shaft horsepower would power four screws for a target speed of 26.5 knots under normal draft, but the ships would never end up being completed, although the least complete of the four, Navarin, was actually launched in 1916, but this was largely because the wooden cradle sporting the hull on the slipway was beginning to rot away and would have soon collapsed otherwise. The Soviet Revolution paused any remaining work that was being done on the ships, and a variety of weird and wacky ideas began to circulate, including repurposing the hulls as freighters or passenger liners. But in the 1920s, it was proposed to at least try and complete Ismail, the most complete of the four, by scavenging parts from the other three and finishing work that had been started on turrets. A more theoretical call to complete two of the ships with twin 16-inch guns instead was largely ignored since the proposal didn't actually mention where the guns were supposed to come from. Various changes in propulsion and upgraded protection were also considered, but these all came to nothing and the three less completed ships were sold for scrap in 1923. Ismail was retained and in 1925 it was proposed to convert her into an aircraft carrier, but the Red Army put paid to that notion the following year and so she was scrapped in the early 1930s after having been stripped for parts for use in other ships. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.